of work that needs to be done, both by EPRI and by others. And so if you're enterprising and you want to get involved, we have more than enough opportunities, and I'll be happy to talk to you about that. Hi, my name is Sharif Youssef. I'm with the uh, Southern California Gas Company. Uh, I'm the R&D manager for our customer applications program. It's about a $10 million program, uh, fund research related to customers that, you know, all types of natural gas equipment. Uh, today I'm talking about how we substitute natural gas with renewables. So I will be focusing our, my discussion on two types of renewable that can substitute nat for natural gas, solar thermal and biomethane, or we, as we refer to it as bio uh, or renewable gas. Uh, our solar thermal project is focused on producing hot water, obviously, but not just for domestic application like homes, but mostly for commercial and industrial applications where you can use the hot water to generate space heating and cooling, or an industrial application where you can use it for all types of industrial high temperature washing applications. Our renewable gas, uh, or biomethane, uh, is focused on you know, taking waste streams, cleaning it up to pipeline quality, of which we can inject that gas into our pipeline and transport it to other location, or use it for uh, on-site for various types of energy. Uh, my remarks today is going to be focusing on the role of distributed renewable resources. Uh, uh, and I think that's a focus of, of, this, of this forum. Uh, we've, we've heard a lot about central utility scale renewables, and, and that's, you know, a lot of work has been done in that area. But I believe uh, a lot of the R&D is lacking for the distributed component of uh, renewable resources. So let me, let me elaborate on that and share with you my view of that. Uh, <clears throat> as we all know, distributed is going to be used, uh, energy will be used on site where the demand is, where the value of the energy is much higher for that particular customer. So I'm, my comments today is referring to installation at customer sites, okay? Customers that use the energy, like a commercial building or industrial facility. Uh, the use of DRE, or distributed renewable energy, it also fits very well with our energy efficiencies program because they can help these commercial industrial customers uh, uh, insulate themselves from volatile energy, energy uh, prices as well as can offset the use of natural gas uh, for these sites. And obviously if you offset the use of natural gas, it can also offset the emissions associated with, it, with natural gas, uh, NOx emissions as well as uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, but there are many challenges for distributed energy, uh, renewable energy or DRE as I call it. Uh, capital cost is high, uh, system integration is not well uh, uh, understood for these types of equipment, uh, permitting is a big issue, uh, system reliability and finally installations. So let me, let me address each one of these challenges uh, as it relates, so again, to DRE. Uh, for example, we're working with a concentrated solar collector company that can produce hot water and electricity. But it's a, it's, a, it's a relatively new technology. It's not very well understood. Of course, the cost is, is quite high because they don't make it in thousands of these units. It's made here in the U.S. So therefore, the capital cost of such a new product is, is, is quite high. And therefore, the, you know, it does not make any economic sense at this time. Therefore, we certainly need a lot of research to help offset or reduce the cost of such a new technology. Uh, system integration. I'm talking about a customer that needs to integrate their solar collector with their other hot water usage. Uh, whether it's for space heating or space cooling or refrigeration in case in industrial facilities, integrating all of this and controlling the energy and how it's being produced or generated as well as how it's being uh, consumed on site requires a lot of control. And, and, and to, you know, that's a, an area certainly needs a lot of research because we see a problem where how you, how you match the 
power generated or the energy generated from renewable with the actual consumption on site. Uh, another challenge is permitting. You know, cities are relatively, city engineers are not well versed on how to permit new technology, especially when it comes to something that they haven't seen before. And therefore, we need to educate these city engineers on how, what is in renewable technologies for, you know, especially for, uh, for uh, technology that's cited at the customer site, and how they can get uh, or offer these uh, construction and, and uh, operation permits to, for the sites. Uh, finally, reliabilities. As with any new technology, it's not very well documented the reliability of these systems. So therefore, we need to document these, uh, the, these systems' reliability and help customers feel comfortable in using it, especially right now with the, with the way the economy is, a uh, customer are very hesitant in investing any money in, in, new in anything, and specifically in new technologies. Uh, finally, let me make a comment about net zero energy or zero net energy. Uh, uh, there's a lot of discussion about electricity, how to use renewable electricity to offset or to achieve our net zero energy. Very little talk or hardly any talk about the use of renewable gas to achieve that. And I don't see how these goals can be achieved without taking into consideration the use of renewable gas into the mixture. Uh, so therefore, we certainly need to significantly uh, uh, offset disparities between uh, the policies that's, that's being pushed now supporting renewable gas and as well as renewable electricity. Thank you. I'm Matt Lacar. <clears throat> I'm with uh, GE Energy in the Energy Consulting Department. It's a group of about 100 scientists and engineers uh, with a, a long history uh, throughout uh, the development of the power industry. Um, something like six IEEE fellows and hundreds of standards committee uh, assignments in the department. So, you know, we, we are sort of at the, at the thought leadership level at the, the top of the energy consulting world trying to figure out uh, this very complex system of systems we call smart grid. And our smart grid team was created in the last year to develop some best practice, try to advise both utility clients and regulators and <coughs> standards bodies uh, about all of the moving parts in the system. So uh, from that perspective, I, I have a couple of thoughts about things we've heard today. One is, uh, you know, I think the electric part of the energy industry uh, has lived in silos for a long time. You have generation people who only worry about power plants, transmission people, distribution people, you know, customer services that only look at the world from a you know, metered account and program uh, view of the world. And those silos are all breaking down. Uh, and so a lot of the discussion you hear is that all of a sudden when we plan new generation activity, you know, particularly with renewables, um, we become much more intimate with the activity of the customer load that's on the same circuit. Uh, we may in fact want to take advantage of the flexibility of demand responsive load to buffer some of the variability of the resource. Um, that's not only new from a technology perspective, but it's really new operationally, and it challenges the utilities management and systems view of what's going on. So we talked, I, I think Brian mentioned, you know, the, the situational awareness, the ability for a distribution operator, for example, on the same screen to be able to look at, you know, a renewable resource, a customer resource, and, and I think to put it in a bigger framework, we had some questions on the last panel about data availability and optimization. I think we're actually moving away from a world where, you know, we've had a portfolio of generation resources that were quote unquote dispatchable, where a system operator would look at, you know, a fixed set of conventional generating plant and stack them up, so on a supply curve of availability and truncate that supply curve at some forecast level of demand. We now live in a world where demand is not merely a flatline forecast, it is an actively influenced or influenced